This is the first of three mini lectures on how to reduce drain induced barrier lowering by uh, tackling these three vertical lengths the oxide thickness, the depletion layer depth, and the junction depth. This is motivated by the need to maintain the threshold voltage as gate lengths get shorter and shorter over time. The threshold voltage, you might recall from last time, can drop when the gate length gets really short. And as this gate length gets short enough, this exponential term becomes something that can't be neglected. We need to have the rest of this exponential be as small as possible so that we're still taking e to the minus big number. So we want to keep the Dibble parameter very small. Let's begin by looking at these two equations, 732 and 733 in Calvin Hu's book. You either have the paper copy in front of you or it's online. So take a look at these two equations and compare them. If you compare them, you can only come to the conclusion that the exponential, e to the minus l over the Dibble parameter, is actually the ratio of the drain capacitance to the electrical oxide capacitance. The drain capacitance is there because you develop a depletion layer around the drain. And if that drain capacitance gets larger, the exponential becomes harder to ignore. So we really can focus on that ratio of capacitances. The effective oxide capacitance needs to be large in order to ensure that the exponential term is negligible. I just rearrange the expression a little bit here and the double parameter seems to go inversely as with the log of the oxide capacitance over the drain capacitance. In other words, I think it's fairly evident that that oxide capacitance needs to be large for the double parameter to be small. So we can decrease the double parameter by increasing the oxide capacitance. So how do you increase the electrical oxide capacitance? Well, there are three things we can play with. The dielectric constant of the oxide, the thickness of the oxide, and then the things that make the electrical oxide capacitance different from the oxide capacitance. So let's look at this expression that has been worked out for the effective thickness of the oxide. And then C sub OXE is the dielectric constant of the oxide divided by this. So we would really like to get this to be as small as possible because a thin oxide means a, a large oxide capacitance, which means that the depletion layer capacitance is not dominating the situation. So there's three things that go into the electrical oxide thickness. There's the actual thickness of the oxide layer, and then there's effective addition due to depletion layer inside the gate, and then there's effective increase due to the inversion layer, which has a thickness T inversion. And those are weighted by the ratio of dielectric constant of the silicon material to the oxide material. That was developed in Chapter 5, Section 9. You can go back and review that. This ratio of the dielectric constants is, for silicon, simply 3. And you'll see 3 in some equations if you wonder where it's coming from. It's coming from this argument. So one thing that you could do to reduce the electrical oxide thickness is to drive the depletion layer in the gate, W sub D poly, polysilicon, to 0. And you can do that by actually using a metal gate. And so there has been a trend in the past quite a few years now of returning to actual metal gates and MOSFETs. And so the M is living up to its name again, the M in MOSFET. We can't really make the oxide thickness too terribly small. There's a limit, a few nanometers, and then you start to get problems with tunneling between the channel and the gate through the oxide. So I recommend that you take a look at this figure in the, the chapter 7 of the textbook, figure 7-8b, which shows for, for silicon the gate leakage current as the oxide layer gets thinner and thinner. And you can see from that graph that for several nanometers and lower, you can actually measure a leakage current through the gate. And if you can measure a leakage current through the gate, that's no good. So you know that, that uh, we need to keep the thickness more than, than a few nanometers. If we go back to the tunneling treatment that we did before, remember tunneling probability is proportional to the minus barrier thickness. 
And so in this case, the barrier would be the oxide thickness because that's what you're tunneling through. So, so the tunneling probability is proportional to that. You make that oxide thickness small enough, you're going to start to have some tunneling. Uh, one way to get uh, still a large oxide capacitance without making the dielectric really thin is to use a high kappa material such as hafnia. And that's what is being used commercially is hafnium oxide because it has a dielectric constant of 24, which is six times higher than that of silicon dioxide. So consequently, you can increase the capacitance while essentially having no tunneling. If you increase this exponential by a factor of six, uh, yeah, it goes away. <laughs> it becomes quite negligible. So you ha you can have no tunnel. You get rid of your tunneling quite easily that way. It goes to 0.2 percent by uh, go changing to hafnia and then increasing the thickness to keep the same capacitance. This brings up a new term: equivalent oxide thickness is a measure of how thick it would be if it were silicon. So if you if you had a silicon dioxide layer with a certain capacitance, and you have uh, another dielectric material layer that gives the same capacitance, the equivalent oxide thickness is a comparison of the two thicknesses that would give you the same capacitance. So if you had, a, say, a 10 nanometer thick uh, silicon dioxide, you'd have the same capacitance as a 60 nanometer thick layer of hafnia, and that's because the dielectric constant is different by a factor of six. So a MOS structure using hafnia can be you know, like 60 nanometers and have the same capacitance as a silicon dioxide MOS structure that's only 10 nanometers thick. So this really helps us to combat the tunneling leakage current through the gate, which is an absolutely no good thing to, to have, have going on. There's no reason for it to exist. Any measurable leakage is a problem, and so that's why the high kappa materials are needed.